So let's talk about how we can solve the equation x to the fourth power plus 64 is equal to 0. And you might be like, let's subtract 64 to both sides and we get x to the fourth power equals negative 64. And then just go ahead and take the fourth root to both sides. That way this and that can cancel. And because it's an even root, we should just put a plus or minus, right? Well, kind of, but please don't do it like this. Because, in fact, for this equation, we are not going to get any real solutions. Whenever we have a negative number inside of an even root, we are not going to get any real solutions. And by the way, altogether we will have four different non-real solutions. Of course, they are called the complex solutions. So, we should really write them down in terms of a plus bi for a complex number. So, try not to do this. And let me show you guys how we can actually factor this right here to solve this equation. To do so, we are going to first look at x to the fourth power as x squared, squared. And then for the 64, is 8 and then squared. And now you might be wondering, this is the sum of two squares. How can we possibly factor this? Well, I'll tell you, yes. This is factorable because it's a special case. This is the fourth degree. Sometimes it's possible, just like this. But it's not so clear, so let me use geometry to make it clear for you guys. So firstly, what does x squared squared mean? Geometrically speaking, I can make a side right here with length x squared. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. This side is also x squared. And then I will just draw a square from it. The area of this is just x squared, right? Because each side is x squared. And then square that. Next, we have the 8 square. It's also square. And it's literally a square, geometrically speaking. I'm going to put it here. A small square here, with each side being 8. So the area is 8 squared. So we have this plus that. We have two little squares. And now if you take a look right here, can we kind of just fill in this and make it into a big square? Yes. And to do so, we just have to fill in this part and likewise this part. Well, this side is 8. This side is x squared. So this area is 8x squared. This side is 8, go up, that's 8. This side is x squared. So this area is 8x squared. So we can actually complete the square if you look at that and then just go ahead and add 2 of the 8 x squares. So it's 16 x squares. Okay. And of course, if I just add a 16 x squared, that changes the whole thing. So we will have to subtract 16 x squared in order to be the same as the original. Right. So it's like this. And then we're subtracting just to have to minus like this is, the just kind of imagine you put it here and put it here. Now, what's the first three terms though? Well, it's just this part, right? This x squared plus 8, x squared plus 8. We can factor it and get x squared plus 8 squared. Bring down the minus. And what's the 16x squared? Earlier it was this and that together gives us 16x squared. That's just 4x times 4x. It's isn't so nice, yeah? So just like kind of take away. Yeah, just, let me just make me now. All right, so that's the 4x and then square. That's equal to 0. Now, we have a difference of two squares, so we can factor it the usual way. And of course, since I'm on geometry, so I'll also show you guys the geometry for that. If we have a squared minus b squared, right? a squared minus b squared, let's say we have a big square, a and a, that gives us the a squared. 
And then this time we have to take away a small square like this, b and b here. So that's we are taking away b square. So now we have a square with a missing corner. Don't worry, we're just going to make a cut and then put this portion here, up here. Earlier we cut off b, so this part is just going to be a minus b. And then now we're adding this part, that's b, so that's a plus b. So a square minus b square, we can look at it as a nice rectangle with a plus b times a minus b. But usually I like to write down this down first. So this right here gives us a minus b times a plus b. Yeah, so as you can see, this question has so much fun because I can go over like so many factoring techniques with you guys. Anyway, so this is our a, that's our b. So we will just have x squared plus 8 minus 4x times x squared plus 8 plus 4x. Then that's equal to 0. Now, we have successfully factored this as a product of two quadratic. Then we just have to make this equal to 0 and solve it, and then make that equal to 0 and solve it, and that'll be it. For the first one, we have x squared minus 4x, yeah, and then plus 8, that's equal to 0. And then for the second one, this is what we have. For the first one, since we have negative, I would like to show you guys how to use the quadratic formula for it. So, I'm looking at a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c is equal to 8. And let me review the quadratic formula with you guys real quick. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. Plug in negative 4, so we have negative, negative 4, plus or minus square root. b is negative 4, square that, minus 4, a is 1, and c is 8, all over 2 times 1. That's 4, plus or minus, that's 16, minus 32 is negative 16 over 2. Now, this is 4 plus or minus. Because we have the negative instead of the square root, that gives us the i. And then square root of 16 is just a nice number 4. And then over 2, it's the same as over 2 here, over 2 here. So finally, we see that's just 2 plus or minus 2i. So from here, we get two answers, 2 plus or minus 2i. And as of the other one, well, it's just off by a negative right here, right? So you know the answer is going to be x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i. But I would like to show you guys how to complete the square again for this, assuming we didn't do that, right? So that way I can show you guys all the techniques. All right, to complete the square, let's put the a to the other side. So we get x squared plus 4x equals negative 8. We can still draw the triangle, the, not a triangle, draw the square. So have a look. x squared means x and x. We can get the x squared. This time though, we are adding 4x, cut into two parts. Do not just say this is 4 and then x. You are going to just get a rectangle. No. Do not just say 4, right? Cut this into half of it. So, you get 2 right here and then 2 right here. So if you put it down like this, you get 2x and 2x. Because this way, as you can see, we will have a corner that's missing. And this corner is just 2 times 2, which is 4. So right here, we will have to add 4. And of course, we have to do the same thing to the other side. And then, if you look at this picture, you can factor it right away. 
that's just x plus 2 times x plus 2, which will give us x plus 2 squared. And that's equal to negative 4. And then from here, take the square roots to both sides, and don't forget the plus or minus. x plus 2 is equal to this. We can put the 2 to the other side. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 4 is going to be 2 because of negative. Here we have the i. And in my opinion, completing the square is better whenever you have a 1 in front of the x squared already and the middle coefficient is even. Completing the square much better. And that's what we have. Yeah, so that's it.